Ooh, man, this thing's dirty. Slim! Get away from that switch! Hey, Slim, what are you doing? Don't turn that thing on! Ah! Well, hey, everybody. Jeff Williams here with SFWins.com! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. What are we doing today? Well, today we got a whole bunch of stuff I want to talk about. So, but before we get into that, me and Slim were in the local Gold Prospector magazine. I bet you didn't know that, huh? <gasps> oh, 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 look at that, there it is. It's in the January 2017 issue. Hoo hoo, there's my secret gold mine. Ooh, remember that? It's a really good article. And there's Slim, check it out. If you don't have it, go out and get it. It's a good article. And there's other good information in there too. Talking about magazines, what else? Ah, <laughs> shazam! That's right, the ICMJ Mining Journal. Oh, I love this thing. Cause it's really got really good information in here. And Chris Ralph, who's the senior editor, he writes really, really good articles in here. I really think you should check it out. And of course in the back, there's the classifieds. If you don't have one, go ahead and pick that one up too. <laughs> All right, now before we get started, I got a whole bunch of names, new patrons that I got to give a shout out to. And before I do that, I know you're thinking, what's he doing now? I'm gonna give out some re-shout outs. I know you're thinking, what is a re-shout out? We had a couple people out there who said that they either didn't hear their name or they wanted to hear their name again. So I'm gonna shout it out again. <laughs> Ready, here it goes. Jaden Aykroyd, Lucas Thompson. A special one goes out to Don Gartland's five-year-old son, Connor. Hey, Connor, how the heck are you? And of course, taco online. Ooh, makes me hungry for a taco. Now on to the new patrons. We got Mike Satterfield, Jason Brown, is that like Jackson Brown? Rudy Adrian? Adrian! Denny Lofton? Jake Newton? Is that like a Newton Bowl or a Nelson Bowl? Daryl Rosenberg? Thomas Strzok? George Perslupski? Gosh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, George. Leo Rodriguez? Richie A? Richie A. Cunningham? Lost Cunningham? Alan Story? Tell me a story, Alan, would you? Stephen Keith Tuller? And Brett W. McKelvey. I want to give you all a big cowboy yeehaw and a shout out. Ready? Here it goes. Yeehaw! <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to thank you all for signing up and helping us keep the dream alive. Me and Slim really appreciate it. So let's get on to the business at hand, shall we? All right, we're gonna talk about these guys right here. Now, before we get started, we gotta talk about the different types of uh, impact mills or crushers they have available out there. This right here is technically considered a flail impact crusher made by K&M and it's the 11 inch drum on here. Now, this is designed to be a pilot mill. And they also sell the 14 inch, which is a production unit. Uh, this is a flail because it uses chains. And they also make another one where they have hammers in here. And each one of these is used in particular scenarios. All right, now before I get started, I'm gonna leave a link down below. So if you wanna get your own, you can. But I'm gonna go over these, these K&Ms. I like these K&Ms. All right, now what I like is they got the feeder in the back. I see a lot of guys put the feeder on the top. Don't like that, because it wants to kick the rock straight up and out. You put the feeders on the back, and then when it runs in, it collects it up, it picks it up, and it slams against this wall right here and then it runs it around and then there's usually a screen in the bottom and when it gets to a particular size whichever that screen size is it'll come out the bottom of the feed tube right here now we run all different types of materials we run limonite shirt and clay quartz which is a really really hard material so what we like to do is on ours weld it in these paddles right here see that now this serves two purposes uh, what it does is it increases the airflow as this thing is spinning counterclockwise like such it brings the rock in, it slams it against this wall over here, and it creates a tremendous amount of airflow. And by doing so, it actually will blow the finer material out. On the side wall here, if you notice, we've put in these strike plates. It's just basically a welded bead here and here, because as soon as the rock comes in, it's gonna kick it right into this section right here. Is that they got a lot of the feeders on the bottom here, and you got a classification screen there. Well, we work with a lot of limonite, if you've seen my other video, and the limonite will plug that up. So what we've done is we put an, um, an exhaust tube on here, and if you look, we put a screen right here. This is our classification screen. And because it's mounted on the side, it doesn't get a lot of abuse. And I can slide the screen out and slide a different size screen in. If you're gonna be building one of these, put the exit port here on the side, right above the entry port. And the reason why you don't want it next to it is because when that rock comes in, it's gonna explode from the impact and you don't want it shooting off to the side. It goes in, material hits the strike plate, bam, breaks into more pieces. It starts to circulate around, around, keeps hitting the strike plate. It can't get out until it reaches the size of that classification screen, and then it'll actually rotate around the top here and blow right out the side. Now, I've seen on a lot of models that people either make or you can buy where 
the shaft comes all the way through to the front plate. I don't like that design because a lot of times when you're doing like sampling, you're gonna need to take that front plate off and that's really hard to do if the shaft comes all the way through to the front pillow block bearing. So if you run two pillow block bearings here and have the shaft in the middle here, see that? And that way you don't have to have this pillow block bearing in the front. Now a lot of people ask me what this thing is. Well, this is a half coupling, half coupling. And then it's got a, a rubber disc that goes in the middle. And then they're set on the shafts here with these little Allen set screws, see that? Now what we found out is that because of the vibration of this thing, that this particular half coupling wants to ride forward this way, no matter how tight we make this set screw. So what we've done was we put a little spacer in there, okay? And it keeps this from sliding forward, just in case you happen to have that problem. Now, if you happen to buy one of these and it doesn't come with the motor because you get that option, uh, these are Smith & Jones motors. You can get them at Harbor Freight. And this is the agriculture model. And this is a one horsepower too. These spin counterclockwise, okay? And if you get the two horsepower, you can wire to go clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, if you plan on putting an exit port on the front of these plates, make sure that it's angled the same direction that the material's going around inside of this drum here okay because if it's going this way you don't want the the exit port going that way a lot of dust is gonna be made from this thing okay a lot you're gonna need an exit port on here okay so all that dust can run out now, I've seen some guys put vacuum cleaners on the end of these to help pull the material through and suck out that dust and I've seen guys put vacuum cleaner exhaust bags on here just to keep the dust down if you don't have a vent somewhere on your bucket what's gonna happen is is all that dust is gonna create back pressure and it's gonna to start to come out the top of this feeder and it's gonna have issues with the material trying to blow out of there. You got that? They make what's called an impact mill. It's where the rock goes in, Keen makes one of those, spins it around, centrifugal force will throw it against the side walls, break that rock up. And of course, the larger models is what's called a hammer mill. You'll see some of these like MMBC makes one of these. A lot of the larger mining companies will use the large hammer mills, but they actually got a set of giant hammers in there all the way around the circumference of that center shaft. But for the small Small scale miner, if you just want a pilot mill for testing or you don't have that big an operation, these flail mills are fantastic. And even the larger 14 inch ones are good. And if you're gonna be in the field, I recommend the gas power, not the electric. Now I gotta recommend before you put the rocks inside of these feeder tubes that you break them down as far as you can. So what a lot of guys do, and I recommend it too, is you get yourself a rock crusher, some way of beating this rock down into small pieces like that. See that? That's about the right size to go in there because it'll be easier for this to crush it into fine powder than this. The ideal crushing circuit is jaw crusher down to one of these impact mills. And then from the impact mill down to a gold cube or an RP4 shaker table or something like that, a gravitational separation unit. Now for you small scale miners out there, who plan on running a lot more material, I highly recommend getting a jaw crusher. I'll put a link down below to some good jaw crushers and we'll do a demo on one so you can see how that works. And if you wanna get the combo units, Keen makes some really nice combo units where it has a jaw crusher on top and then it has a set of roller mills that it goes through. I haven't made one yet, but I highly recommend you put a guard over this thing right about here. Because if you get anything close to this, it's gonna suck it in because it's spinning really, really fast. Or if anything decides to come off of it for whatever reason, it's gonna gonna hurt real bad and you ain't gonna like it. Now I'm gonna leave a link down below so you can check out all the different types of hammer mills and impact mills and flail mills that are out there. And I'll even leave a link down to some of the bigger ones, so like the ball mills and the rod mills if you wanna step up your game. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's short little video on these flail mills. And if you like today's episode, please rate, share, and ah, that's right, subscribe. And of course, leave me Slim and Nevada Jack comment because we like to know what you think about all this craziness out here. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams and whoo. <laughs> that's right. That's JeffWilliams.com saying you want to crush some rocks without spinning a lot of dough? We'll get yourself an impact meal and you'll get yourself some gold. Take care, everybody.